Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. Welcome to another Fiberific Live Craft and Chat. It's Thursday morning for me here. I have got my trusty cup of tea in my Fiberific mug. I really should have tea just before I click that button, but what happens is I get into this last minute frazzle of just like <gasps> going live in a couple of minutes, must do all the things, and then don't drink the tea. So um, I like to drink the T2 Licorice Roots tea, not a sponsor. T2, please help me out. Um, because it actually helps me to be able to keep talking for two hours, which, you know, is a thing. Um, if you've read the comic, the, the topic of today's chat, we're going to be talking about what do you do when the dye runs out of your yarn? You know when you wash your yarn and then all of a sudden the, the tub is full of like color and you're just like what do I do with this I was in a Facebook group earlier this week and a lady posed a problem she was very specific about the yarn content and the suggestions were just wrong and I hate to be so definitive about things I like to be very much a case of well you know you need to try different things and you, these are just wrong is and I really hated I really hated feeling so definite about something. You know, there's normally a lot of gray areas with craft. There's really a lot of creativity and, and things like that. But this was just, I was really surprised about how like passionately wrong they were as well. And I'm sort of just sitting there thinking, wow, okay. So before we get into that, a um, couple of things, a couple of little housekeeping things. A, we have a new microphone. Now, I think you need to let me know but i think it's picking up the air conditioner quite heavily so if it gets too much let me know we can drop the air conditioning off until i it's a new microphone and i've got new things i have to learn how to tweak so um other than that i really quite like it uh kim is here so she is is, is in the in the chat but we don't have so kim <laughs> kim also found my bag of um Ushis that I had so Kim has found a lot of fun things to do with the Ushis um, So no one can hear the AC so that's great So at the moment it's it and it's little quiet working mode when it gets to the oh It's hot in here again, and it kicks in. I think that's when you'll hear it um, I'm definitely loud. Yeah, so I, um, I I well and truly um, have boosted the audio a little bit. I've been listening back on the audio of the last few weeks and it's been very quiet so i have boosted the audio a little so hopefully no one's deaf um that would be great kelly pole is asking about crowns so when we work on our crochet cow queen pattern queen cow where's your crown my crown's inside i forgot to bring it out so i mean if you want you could go and grab it for me it's just in my craft room it's right there but you don't have to um <laughs> So, but yeah, I've, I've got my crown. Um, don't know about ladder, but a lot clear. Oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you, Freaky. Um, AC, what AC? That's great. Thank you, Ruth. I really appreciate you guys letting me know. Um, Sally, Spanish chick is not mic'd up. Um, we're going to see, I think this microphone actually picks her up as well. So I didn't want like audio flashback. The other reason why I haven't cammed up or mic'd up um, um the second camera today is last week right at the end when we crashed it was actually a logitech error that crashed our system and so i've only got the one logitech webcam plugged in which is our hands down camera so there's no snowy cam there's no kim cam um so because I, I i tried testing it out just not live and nothing happened so we're, we're running a test today live so we're going to be doing that did kim threaten to beat me up no she didn't um, and you can hear in the background, so that is cool. Now, down here in, in my hands, I've got my queen cow. So, whoops, come back here, little queen cow. So that's where I'm up to so far. We'll get working on that shortly. But the first thing I wanted to talk, at, talk about, and without distraction, so I don't really want to be crafting just yet, um, is this problem. How did you go? We have a crown. Kim made me a beautiful crown to wear while I'm crafting my queen. So this is my crown. So I will wear this when I start working on my queen. I've just undone him. That's good job, Chantal. Good job. Okay. So I want to talk about um, setting color 
when you are dying. Now this is probably would have been a good one for a um, hands-on tutorial and I may well do that down the track but for right now um, I just wanted to talk through some stuff. So someone mentioned in the chat earlier that dyeing is chemistry and that's 100% true. Dyeing yarn is chemistry and we're looking for different reactions for different fiber types and different dyeing types. Now the thing that's really important to remember is all yarns are not dyed the same way. Okay, That's a really important thing to remember because protein yarns like silk and wool and things like that that come from animals protein um, they dye with acid dyes, they require heat and acid. Um, there, there's some dyes that don't require the heat so much, but they tend to, um, they're a bit more, uh, uh, how do I put it, um, commercial, a bit more commercial, tend to use those ones. So a lot of indie dyes use heat and acid for their dyeing. If you're dyeing cotton, that's a cold water dye setup. Um, and um, so that is a, a different thing again. And so cotton's a cellulose dye. So anything like cotton, tensile, anything that's a plant that grew, that's a cellulose. And then you move into your man-made fibers, your acrylics and your polyesters. And that's where we start to get a bit trickier because you can't actually dye those um, properly in a home setup. So you'll find that if you see um, footage of like uh, there's a video I think that Mikey from Crochet Crowd did. He went and got to see them spinning Red Heart yarn and all the fibre was already dyed. So it was dyed and then spun and that's because um, polyester requires extreme heat for dyeing. Um, and so polyester is actually really hard to dye. Uh, so if you know a felter who likes to dye their own um, sort of uh, sheer fabrics to Nuno felt on, they'll talk about how hard it is to dye it and they normally try to buy it in the colour that they want it. So um, Sharon says, if you do a hands-on tutorial, can you do it with top or roving? I'm tending to felt, which is annoying. So, so felting happens, Sharon, when you touch it. So to, cre to create felt, you need, you need um, heat and you need agitation. And so generally people, if you're... Um, if you are uh, felting your items in the pot, A, you've got too much heat, or B, you've moved it around too much. Basically, especially with fibers, you put it in, you let it heat, you don't touch it, Justin's then you let chat. it cool. Justin's in the chat. Hey, Justin, thank you. Um, my chat's looking awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I've been having a bit of fun with it, as these guys know. So um, Deb's poking the bear. She's asking if I can salt, if she can salt the, the yarn. So salting, this was the advice that came up. I can, Kim, you're a terrorist. This is the advice that we get a lot is when people, um, they, they bought a commercial yarn, they've made their item and um, they have made their thing and then they rinse it to block it or just wash it and dye just runs everywhere. The water is just bright color and um, it is insane okay so what happens is they freak out and they jump online and they go oh my god my yarn is running what do I do the resounding thing that I see is people go salt and cold water now if your yarn is cotton or jeans or fabric that's perfect advice that's exactly what you need to do for jeans and cotton fabrics and all these sorts of things you need salt and you need cold water but when you have wool content that is going to do nothing absolutely zero okay what it will do is you'll have salty yarn that's it so as an indie dye when we use we do use salt in our dye mixes but what that does is it actually um, inhibits the dye so if I want to create a solid color with no semi-solid movement I will add a very small salt solution or saline solution into my dye mix and what that does is it slows down the acid reaction to take up the dye which means the yarn sucks it up more evenly so you get a more even dye now I personally don't do it very often because I like the crazy semi-solid sort of feel of, of hand, dyed, hand dyed yarn so salting it defeats the purpose for me so when I see people suggesting salt and cold water I just I, I, 
I, I have to close my eyes and be all like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a lot. Um, it's not it's not gracious and I try not to reply because it's what they know, you know, and because it does work for fabric, cotton fabrics. Um, so would the salt addition work with dyeing silk fabric also? It will inhibit and silk tends to take dye a lot faster naturally. So if you are concerned about that, you need to be um, you need to be putting your silk fabric in wet for a start and you need to be trying to get it under the dye as evenly as possible. But yes, the salt will work. I'm not sure exactly to what um, extent it will definitely work because silk's a protein and it does work the same way, but I've not dyed much in the way of silk fabric. I've done little bits, but not enough to be all like, um, enough to go, okay, I think that would work this way. Okay, so we'll go there. Um, Spanish Chick says, I've used infusible inks to do things to polyester teas. You have to press it to about 200 degrees to make the ink vaporize and the polyester absorbs it. That's right. Polyester needs incredible heat. So this particular lady who who was re requesting help on Facebook the other day, she, um, she had a 50-50 wool polyester blend. Okay. So what it comes down to is a polyester you could do nothing with because of the wool. If you heat wool to 200 degrees, you've killed it. It's dead, throw it in the bin. And she'd already crocheted up a beautiful shawl. You don't want to kill all that work, okay? So she, um, she, she just asked the question and everyone was like, salt, 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 salt. And I'm like, okay. <sighs> it does work with jeans because jeans are cotton. <laughs> all fabric's the same. Oh, Kim. Oh, Kim. She's button pressing. Um, I'm just going to... Calming down from Kim the poker. Breathe. Breathing. Breathe. <laughs> oh. So this particular one, all we could do was colour set the wool component. Okay. So if you have... I'm not reading any comments out loud. <laughs> Tim's gonna, Kim, Heidi says Kim's going to get it. <laughs> so if you have a blend, what you need to do is you need to work to the, um, the, the, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The gentlest or the, the most fragile portion. If it's a blend, don't work on the polyester, work on the, on the, the wool, which is the, the gentlest blend. Okay. So otherwise working with the harder blends or the more, um, durable blends is like part of the blend it's going to destroy the weaker section so you need to focus on um, working on the wool portion now to color set your wool those of you that watch my live dyes you guys know the drill St um, hot water not boiling you want to get your pot or your pan or whatever up to a um, a gentle steam so you can see steam like wafting off the top of the pot but there is no movement in that water okay so you want the water if you've got a thermometer you want that water about 80 degrees 75 to 80 degrees if you don't have a thermometer you just want to get it to that point before it's boiling if it boils and your yarn's in it your yarn will get damaged okay i'm not going to lie to you it's just how it is all right so you do not want the water to boil so you put your you, you get your yarn in there you put your project in while the water's still a bit cool or even cold so sorry i'll start from the start fill up your pot put your acid in whether it's so i'm thinking about a 10 15 liters of water to two tablespoons of vinegar or if you've got citric acid about a tablespoon of citric acid okay so they both they both work um, I personally use citric acid, but if you want to, if you've got vinegar in the cupboard, white vinegar will do the job. Okay, put your project in and bring it up to temperature. So you want to keep an eye on it, and then once it hits that sort of just steaming point, you want to hold it there for about 30 minutes. Turn the heat off, whack the lid on, walk away, let it cook, get cold. Okay, so when you come back to it, any dye that's still in the water could not be absorbed by the wool. And it was probably coming out of the polyester, which you can't do anything about. Okay, so it is, it's different. So nylon is, it has a different um, structure, like a different chemical structure than polyester. And nylon can be treated 
as a protein. So it is dyed the same way protein is. But nylon and acrylic and polyester are not the same. Okay, so they have different, like uh, I think uh, polyester is a dacron, um, acrylic is an, oh, what's it, an, an ucron, and nylon is something else. They're all different families and they've got very different chemical structures. Okay, um, so... <laughs> Yeah, so what is about nylon that, uh, that allows it to take acid dyes? It has a different chemical makeup and it's a lot more similar to the protein than it is to the polyester. Um, yeah, I'm just skipping over Gamer Widow, uh, not Gamer Widow, skipping over Freaky Geek. Hi, Gamer Widows. Um, so that's, that's what we do there. So you have to dye to, uh, you have to heat set it to the weakest or the most um, fragile part of your blend. Now, if you have um, a, a, just a pure cotton, salt, cold water, go hard, you know, like no problems. If you have tensile and wool, you can salt it if you want. That will, that will get the, um, the dye, depending on the dye they used, because then you have the dyes that you need for cellulose and the dyes that you need for protein. Personally, here at Fiberific, we use the dyes that we need for protein. So even though we have some cellulose blends, like our Triangulum, that's a 50-50 wool and tensile, um, the wool takes lots of dye. The tensile can be stained by the dye, if that makes sense. So it will change colour, but it hasn't been dyed and it is not colour fast because it has been stained and it is not colour fast dyed, okay? Do you guys have any questions? I'm so passionate about this topic. I'm sorry. I've just been like, Scott in the chat. hey, Scott Snyder. How are you going, man? I love your spindles so much. Um, so C Caitlin's asking, so if you have a mixed yarn, e.g. wool and polyester, will the polyester take the color or will it end up splotchy? It will end up splotchy. So if you are personally dyeing an undyed wool polyester blend, you will be able to dye your wool and if it's a if it's a two ply where it's barber polled you'll have one ply that's colored and one that might be a hint of the color because the polyester cannot be dyed with protein dyes it can be stained but not dyed so also polyester needs ridiculous heats which will kill your wool um so uh the tensile you mentioned is that the oh god <laughs> Freaky, I should stop reading your comments. You crack me up. Um, Justin's like, woohoo, almost at 5k subs. Everyone in here is subscribed, right? What about giving it a thumbs up? It really makes a difference. It does, it does. Guys, if you don't know who Justin Brown is, he is like a super duper mentor of mine. And um, he runs Primal Video, which teaches me how to do a lot of the things that I do tech wise. So, you know, when he says something really helps and makes a difference, He's normally on the money for that. Um, Lego Bob says, it's all very interesting. This is why we let you do this. And this is why, like, I saw that, Kim, terrorist. Um, and this is why, like, a lot of people uh, will be all like, oh, indie dyes charge so much for their yarn, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the reality is we basically have to have little mini chemistry labs in our homes um, to do it. So um, I'm just scrolling back up here. Um, Dizzy's asking, I had a wool angora poly mix a while back. The poly was the only bit that didn't take the dye and I tried it on the stove and in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. Poly needs ridiculous amounts of dye and protein dyes will not dye polyester. You need to go out and do your research and get the right dye for the right, um, uh, fibers. Um... Jackie's popped a link in um, for an article on the different man-made fibres and, and she says it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, Dizzy's asking if anyone has a favourite acid to use. She swaps between vinegar and citric acid. I personally like citric acid. Um, it smell as much. Sorry? It doesn't smell as yeah, much. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't smell as much. But I will say that if I'm dye dyeing my sparkly yarns, you know the ones with the little gold threads, the little silver threads? I use the vinegar on those because the citric acid dulls the sparkles. So I, I technically do both. Um, I'm skipping past Freaky Geek. Oh my God, Freaky is the worst. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, um, oh, sorry, Freaky. It was an honest question. 
Sorry, Freaky. Um, Tencel is tensile, not tinsel. Um, T-E-N-C-I-L. It's a man-made fibre made from wood pulp. And so, no, it's not the same. Um, you're thinking of like tinsel, which some of those long strands of tinsel, they look a lot like your glitz and your angelina that you can get, which is pretty well similar. The glitz and angelina can normally take a bit more heat than tinsel. Um, sorry, my accent may screw up tinsel and tinsel. I've just realised. Then I was being cheeky to Freaky Geek. And I'm sorry, Freaky. Um, have you done any natural dyeing like indigo? No, I haven't, because I actually am more afraid of natural dyeing than I am of my chemical dyeing. Um, natural dyeing requires a lot more in the way of um, heavy metal mordants and things like that, so I haven't really gone down that route. Um, I've got, I still got my daughter at home, and I just, um, I'm, I'm nervous about it, and I would love to have a go but I don't think it would ever become part of my regular business, you if that makes sense. Um, yeah, you need to t totally check out Gum Blossom Yarns. All of her stuff is naturally dyed. She is actually a chemist by trade, is what she does. And so she is, she's on it. She knows exactly what needs to be done. And she gets some amazing colours out of some, like the different colours that she can get out of black beans. Honestly, you need to go and check out Gum Blossom Yarns. Um... Vinegar is a little gentler, Jackie says. Uh, look, I don't know. Citric, I use food grade citric acid. I get like big, massive 20 kilo buckets of it. And it's the same stuff that they use in like bath bombs and things like that. So it's actually fantastic on my skin. <laughs> That's how my hands retain their youthful glow. Um, so I've, I've missed something else that Scott Snyder has said there. It was like, I'm like... I'm like looking at the, like your comment there, Scott, and it's making me think when you are, um, when you pre, like when you're soaking your cotton, you have to soak it in uric acid, which is, you know, pretty well the active ingredient in your pee. Um, and so you have to dye, soak it in that first and then you can cold water color dye it, no problems. Rebecca's a bit late. Hey, Rebecca. Um, back to craft and chat. Good job on the picking on my accent there, John. Well done. Um, Angela just arrived. Does cotton need a pre-soak of soap and salt and vinegar and this set with vinegar post dye before the final rinse? Okay, cotton will not, cotton doesn't need vinegar. So cotton requires uric acid, not citric acid. Um, so you need to go and have a good old look. I like um, greener shades, I think they're called, for, for um, dyes for cotton, but that's a personal preference. But yeah, definitely go and have some research. Um, Dharma do a cotton as well, so you can check that out as well. They're both really, really reputable brands. Either As long as they get the colours you want, either will work for you. But um, cotton does not dye in the same way that wool does. Wool doesn't need salt for um, colour fixing cotton does so um, it's really important to go and check out your individual fiber that you're wanting to dye because one of the reasons here at fiberific we don't have a cotton line yet is it requires don't you i heard that smirk kim um, it requires an entire different collection of dyes so all the dyes that i have will work beautifully on silk nylon wool mohair cashmere like anything protein plus nylon um, Whereas it will not work on cellulose. Um, Jackie's popped in a link for gum blossoms. Thank you very much. Um, is the amount of citric acid the same as you use for visit? Uh, so um, for me personally, you need to just trial and error what you're happy with. There's a couple of things, okay? So it depends on what you want your final product to look like. If you want to be dip dyeing in a couple of different colours and you want like bright blue to strike here and then you want to dip it again and have some of that bright blue change to purple but you also want some good pink spots and you dip dye it in the pink. So what you need to do is have a higher acid. Your, your water needs to be hot like at that good 70, 80 degrees. If you go over 80 and you have silk, you are going to dull the sheen of your silk. Okay, your silk will not be shiny if it's over 80 degrees, all right? So that's a really good thing to remember. But so you 70 to 80 degrees and dip it. But if you want that fast color strike, up your acid. You need around two tablespoons. It's, it's, it's going to depend on the quality of your acid, obviously. But around two tablespoons of vinegar in a pot to get the same 
colour striking as I get with half a tablespoon of citric acid. So because vinegar is already diluted in water, whereas citric acid is in granules. So I use citric acid because it's easier to store and I can have a whole lot more of it. Um, I'm just going to keep scrolling down here. You guys can hear the aircon now, but it's not too bad. This is the loudest it's going to get, I think. I don't think it gets any louder than this, does it, Kim? No. Poor Kim. Like, because my desk is right near the aircon, so I get the nice gentle flow of the air over the top of me. Kim's right where it just like <laughs> gets her right in the back, so she has to bring a jumper. Um, you two are the twin terrors. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Kim disagrees. We all know that's crap, right? Yeah, we definitely do. Um, so I'm just having a look here. Um, see you later, Kerry. Have a great day at work. Um, it would depend on your concentration and the pH of your level. Also, double check the pH of your water. That can change from day to day, okay? So if you're on town water, if you are on tank water, whatever you're on, you need to be checking your water pH because it will change how much acid that you need. Now, sometimes it's barely anything and you just don't bother, right? But you need to understand that it can change your outcomes. And whether you're okay with that sort of a bit wild and crazy, which is probably more me, um, like whatever's kind of deal when it comes to colour, like I'm going to get what I get. Let's splash some colour and have some fun. That's where I'm at. But if you are like, right, I want this very particular shade and I, and I want it exactly like this, you need to go and get yourself some pH strips, check the pH of your water, have a, work out how much acid you're going to need. You might need a little less if your pH is a little bit lower. Yeah, just you need to research it and double check, all right? Kim says it's barely helping when it kicks it up, though. Are you talking about my air conditioner? My jumper. Oh, okay. All right, good. I was going to say, my air conditioner is cranking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> my jumper is barely helping. Like, there's a shawl or something handy if you want one. A wool one. Oh, good point. Sorry, Kim's allergic to wool, and she's in the fibre picture. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. What Kim has literally just done is she has turned a little table and is now squatting down behind her laptop. I was going to say, if you come a bit closer, but I don't... It's still hitting here. So you'd have to be, like, here. <laughs> okay? I can see behind you and shadow you. That would not be creepy at all. Um... Uh, Dizzy says, I didn't think of that. My water keeps changing as um, I empty the tank. Um, yeah, Sally forgets that the blanket's made out of wool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, because Kim is allergic to wool, so she cannot touch anything. She has to take her antihistamines before she even comes over. So, she's very dedicated because I would have gone, not coming to your allergy den. <laughs> Um, Dizzy said that when we lived in Rockhampton, we had crows in our tank. As in, like, dead animal crows, or just they would play in it. Like, I need to know this now. This is a fact I need to know. So, I'm going to move to our top-down camera so I can start crafting, but I'm going to keep answering your questions. So, keep chucking them at me if you've got any more questions um, about... Well, pretty well anything yarn related, but in, we, we, we are really talking about running dye. So I think I've covered, I covered cotton and wool. If you hold two four plies together, do you get an eight ply? Moving right along, I put my crown on now because it's crown queen time. I'm not used to wearing my crown without, um, without my headphones, Kim. Apparently if you like are doing the queen, yeah, you're part of Queensland. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, let's go to our double camera setup. All right, we're working on our queen cal here. I've still got one more row here. I'm just double checking that my chart is not in camera. Um, I have permission from um, from Tina to, to do this on camera, uh, just as long as I don't show the chart that I'm working from. So, you know, let's not, let's not upset the amazing designer, okay? Um, Oh, gnomes, yes, sorry, before we get started, guys, our good friend, Emma, over at Pip and Poppycock, has just released, I'm, I'm, I'm very distracted, so let's just go back to this, um, our good friend, Emma, over at Pip and Poppycock, has just released her first book, 
and it is these most adorable seasonal gnomes. Now, I don't have any images of that, but if Kim, if you can pop in my link, that would be great. Um, so the the Kim the link that Kim's putting in is an Etsy affiliate link, so that also supports this channel, um, as well as makes no difference to Pip and Poppycock. She gets exactly what she was going to be getting. Um, so if you want to go and get that, they are the cutest, and I especially love the summer ones with their little thongs. Flip flops. Flip flops. <laughs> flip flops. Sorry, sorry. I've probably just given somebody a mental image they don't need. Um, they are adorable, and I love that she's made them out of beautiful cotton, and then just uses acrylic for their beards and their hair. So go and check out from from Spanachick's link um, into Etsy to go and check out her first book. If the pattern is written anything like her other patterns, it's going to be phenomenal. And from what I hear, correct me if I'm wrong, Kim. But it's all made in one, so I don't have to sew the arms on. Apparently. Because, like, if any of you have seen my amigurumis, then you will understand why I'm so excited about this, because I cannot seem to place limbs correctly, and they always a bit like, you know, one arm up here and one down there. Anyway, go and check out her gnomes. Click on the Etsy link, the, the Tiddly link there, and, um, and go and check it out. All right. They are, how big are they? 12 inches apparently. Wow, they are big gnomes. They would be so cute. If you make them like heavy and they can be doorstops, like fill them with like poly beads or something. Oh dear, they did. They really jumped on the, um, the, other, the other flip flops thing, didn't they? Okay, all right, let's go to our double camera and we'll put our queen crown on because we are working on our queen. Oh, come on. Seriously, I have to make a different size setting because I'm used to wearing this over the top of my headphones for Zoom chats. All right, work out where I'm up to. I'm up to the last row of the seashell, which is actually a bit brighter in real life than this. Kim, what are you doing? You, it's not. It's it's not in shot. <laughs> Kim's here like waving her arm around like a crazy thing, and it's just not in shot. Okay, so I've got one last row of seashell and then I'm moving over to the coral. Um, if you want to see a complete list of the colours that I'm using and the order that I'm putting them in, I've put them over on the Fibrific Facebook page along with a um, affiliate link to Nitpicks. So if you decide you want to buy anything from Nitpicks and you want to help out the Fibrific channel, you totes can. Can you use tartaric acid for dyeing? Not dyeing protein. Um, it's it, it actually breaks down a couple of little important enzymes. So I would not use tartaric acid for your protein dyeing. I have no idea about whether or not it can be used for cotton. I just know don't use it on wool. I did. One day I thought they were interchangeable. And uh, yeah, no, that was back in the days when I was very much first learning about dyeing. That yarn went in the bin. So 100% do not recommend. Um, so Aldi sewed gnomes in, oh, mankinis. Okay, yeah, we are going down a, a path. Let's let's not go down a, a path. Um, so, yeah, glad I missed that one. Yeah, me too, me too. All right, I'm just, just... You guys know the drill. As I started up, I, I have to keep looking at the pattern because there is a there is a slight difference before you get to the where it keeps repeating. So I've got to get to sort of here. All right. So, um, yeah, I need to concentrate for just one 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 minute. All right. Like, bear with as I keep looking at the chat and reading your questions. It's totally not your fault. Um, so, did anybody have any other questions about? Um, colour setting your uh, yarns um, safely and in a way that does not destroy what you have worked so hard on. A boiling wool is never an option by the way, I need to point that out, I'm not sure if that needs to be said. Boiling your wool should never ever happen, okay? Unless you want to felt it. Well yeah, unless you, well even if you want to felt it, you don't need to boil the crap out of it. Um, so yeah. That's just one of those things. I'm just... That one there. Oh, sweet as, bro. This is going to be a nice, easy one. Not like last night's efforts. 
where I had to pull it out like 14 times just to do the row because I kept losing track because, you know, I can't. Ruth is listening while she is driving. Hopefully you are focusing on the road. Um, no friction is more in for friction is more important for felting than heat yes absolutely um friction like so if you if you are like if your goal is to felt something chuck it in like an agitating washing machine with suds you want soap you want friction and even cold wash with soap and agitation will felt way better than um than boiling it Rebecca is lost. Sorry, Rebecca. At the start, we had we've had a big conversation about color setting our yarns and about what not to do. You might need to scrub back to um to check that out. Why the salt for cotton? I I'm not sure if you could if you heard Kim's comment. She says it because it tastes nicer. Um, I'm not entirely certain of the scientific reasons for it, but it is the chemical reaction between the salt and the cotton and the dye that makes the dye the dye um, set. So if you've got jeans that are like bleeding, um, like any of you end up with blue legs from wearing new jeans without washing them, like I've, I've done that. Um, that is definitely wash them in some, some salt and cold water. Um, so... But it's you, Hi, you're trying. Bobby. Bobby's watching Fiber Fig. Says, look how fast you are going. With what? <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Bobby. Um, so, yeah, it's it's you. You're looking for the correct chemical reaction for the fiber that you have. So, if you have cotton, you have wool, you have silk, whatever you have, you need to be hunting down for the correct scientific. I look at my hand. I'm like. Pfft. Sorry, I will crochet. Um, you, ne you need to find that correct chemical reaction. So if you look online, the, the, the correct results are there. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is the little soak-up sheets that people recommend. Colour catchers. Colour catchers, okay? Now, in this same conversation that I, that I was um, watching um, or even a part of, I was in, I was in like a sub-part of the competition um, not competition, the, the sub part of the conversation. So I was trying to ignore all the salt, 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 salt. There were like easily 80 recommendations for salt. Me and one other lady recommended vinegar and heat. Um, so yeah, I'm wearing a crown because I'm working on my queen, um, for those wondering. Um, so it is, it, one of the other recommendations was people talking about how they use these color catchers. Now, I have nothing against color catchers, but color catchers do not set your dye. All they do is stop that dye that's leaching out and fading your product from leaching into something else. That's all they do. So if you have a, a polyester or something like that that you can't color set, um, and it is continuously leaching, then absolutely use a color catcher to stop it from getting into your other clothes, for sure. Or wash it by itself and then it doesn't matter. But all that's doing is capturing that dye that's in the water. It's not actually stopping the dye from leaching at all, okay? So you still will lose the dye, your item or yarn will still fade. Um, I'm just making sure I'm doing the right thing here, so because I'm very passionate about this topic, as you've probably worked out. <laughs> it's like a, let's add using salt to color fast yarn to my list of like blood boilers. Um, makes sense, awesome. Um, hi, Christine Chris, welcome to the chat. Um, pressing the button on my shit machine was, yeah, so hard. But you had to work it out and make sure they fit on adult heads and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I said measure your head. You did. You made <laughs> us measure our heads for our hats. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions that any of you have on... I'm um, sorry, I'm not in the middle here. On, um, on colour setting yarn. I'm going to have a sip of my tea in one second. My delicious, delicious tea. Kim has no other beverages. 
I did not. Oh, you do have water. I was going to say, I did not supply you with any beverages other than the coffee when you walked in the door. Um, Kim has a cry cut machine, which I love to pieces, and I'm so tempted to buy one, but I actually think it's Kim's skills with the cry cut machine that make it so awesome, and I don't believe I have those skills. So I would just have a very expensive thing, not doing all that much. You could go on cry cut, can you? Crack it. <laughs> So next weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of next week, I'm going on a sewing camp with Kim um, and also another friend of ours, Lynn. And appar Kim. apparently Kim just sits at these camps in the corner with a bottle of wine and a straw. So um, I'm going to be having to try all these scary sewing things I've not done by myself. John says that I don't have to buy one. I've just got access to you. <laughs> So, just got a scanning cut. I was, John, it's actually not that far from the truth. I'm like, Kim, could your thing do this thing? And she's like, yeah, look, see, awesome. I'm like, thanks. Um, sowing the seeds of wisdom. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, so next weekend I am off for a, 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 it's a long weekend for me of, of not actually fibrific working. So no wisdom there. The, the, this sewing camp sounds like a ton of fun. Yes, it is. What are you saying? It's cry cut. Yes, it is. It's cry cut. You're quite right. Cry cut. Well done. Where's Lisa based? Lisa's on the north side. Come to camp with us, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> There's two more spots. If it was to be pronounced cricket, then it would have a K in it. Kim, Scott Snyder's like like Jiminy. He's, yes, exactly like Jiminy Cricket. It's cry cut. It's spelled C R I C U T cry cut. But their mascot is a cricket. Okay. It's cricket. <laughs> I also know how to press Kim's buttons. Um, Lisa wants to know if it's wheelchair accessible. You might want to. I think it is. I think DM Lisa. Like cabins that are. Yeah. DM Lisa some details. Let me, let me message Leone and find out. We're just going to find out if it's wheelchair accessible. Because she's in. <laughs> um, cricket, Heidi says, crickets are awesome. I'm not reading that sentence. Soz, that's from the company. I, I, look, at, look, at, look at me not caring. <laughs> I'm, I just call a cricket to annoy Kim. Um... John O'Brien asks if it's a sewing camp with Evelyn Wood because she's my second favourite Aussie. Um, I, I don't believe Evelyn Wood will be there. I, I don't think so. No, not that I know of. Lisa said she couldn't get to spinning camp this weekend. No, I had to choose between the two and I felt a little guilty, but I chose the sewing one. Um, Kelly says sewing camp, is there a focus? Yes, there is. There is a secret squirrel project. Um, so we have... Kim, the, it's Mandy Murray from So Quirky and Kylie Jersey Kalinskis <laughs> from Little Moo Designs. Okay, so we've got a, a sewing designer and an applique designer who work together and we have to make an applique thing one day and then we make, um, it's a bag, isn't it? Yes. We're making a bag the next day and then we place our applique thing on our bag. Hopefully, unless my, like mine, because I've never done any of this, is likely to fall apart. Um, Lisa says she doesn't want to stay over. No, she didn't want to stay over. I'm assuming by talking about him. Oh, okay. All right. I oh, just want to be a day visitor at Gympie. Okay. Um, Sally's asked the big question of John: Who's your favourite Aussie? That's a that's a that's a minefield question. <coughs> Kelly wants to know if we have to take our own sewing machines. I'm taking mine. It's preferred for you to take yours, but if you don't have one, you can make arrangements to hire one for the weekend. Okay, can you, did you hear that? Um, yes, they can hear me. Okay, all right. Because <laughs> I can hear me now. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I just want to double check because, you know, I don't want to repeat her if I don't have to. Um, 
so yeah so that will be some fun 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 that you know we're planning on having yeah at Gimpy okay sorry Lisa I got a bit confused there um, Claire says incredibly jealous of the thought of an in-person class and camps from down in Melbourne yeah so I got in quite late um, for this particular thing and I was on a backup list because they had already reached their COVID maximum safe number for um, a few months ago and then I got a call up saying hey because Queensland restrictions were lifted a little it meant they could in have an extra couple of people so I was able to jump in but you guys down in Melbourne you're starting to like everything's starting to sort of very slowly but you've got some light at the end of the tunnel so fingers across it keeps slowly opening back up and things keep coming um, Lisa says if I take mine can you guys help me carry mine or should I organize a support worker I'll DM yeah DM us because I think because we can leave our sewing machines in a room once we're set up we're set up aren't yeah. we so, so it's just a case of carrying it from her car there's a trolley to put all your gear on and Leonie will wheel you up to the main hall and set you up and stuff. Sounds like you don't need your support worker unless you need one I'm just trying to overnight. work out. I know there's a couple of steps to get into the hall. I don't know if they can put a ramp up to get into yeah. the hall. Yeah, we're just going to find out from Leonie if the actual... have wheelchair access. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the lower toilets are wheelchair accessible. Alright, well we're going to find out if, if the actual classrooms are wheelchair accessible and go from there. Uh, Rebecca is asking, no, this, Rebecca, this is Brava Worsted that I'm using here from Knit Picks. Um, the pattern actually recommends DK, like for sure, um, but I have decided to take a leaf out of Kim's book and just do whatever I want. Um, <laughs> I really wanted to use the Brava. I love the Brava. I don't, I'm not a fan of, I know this is going to be very controversial. Are you ready? I'm not a fan of Stylecraft. I know it's a big thing it's big I get it um, I'm just not a big fan I don't like how it feels in my hands and so when I decided to go with the Brava I had to choose between their sport weight and their worst weight because I don't have a DK so it was you know it was tricky but I realized that because the actual quilt itself is 150 by 200 centimeters right so um, did I say Starcraft or Stylecraft Oh, sorry. I meant style, Stylecraft. Stylecraft, not Stylecraft. Um, so the actual pattern says it's a queen cow, but I think I wrongly assumed queen cow meant queen blanket, right? Which it's just not. 150 by 200, not a queen. 200 by 200 is a queen. So um, going with the worsted weight has meant I've got a little bit, a little bit of stuff over the sides of my bed um like just a little hangovers on each side what, what are you doing you, it's got no this this in here is not in shot just so you know but so. this is kim's like oh, <laughs> i stole it kim ha 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 <laughs> she's just gonna chuck another one at me that was terrifying <laughs> um yeah, so, oh, sorry, Freaky doesn't know Stylecraft either. Look, it's a very popular yarn. It's a it's a DK out of the UK, I believe. Um, it has a huge range of colours, and that's why people love it. Absolutely massive range of colours, which I am a bit jealous of, to be honest. Uh, Knit Picks does not have that, like, the, the Brava does not have the same range of colours. But I found some colours I liked, so I went with those. Um, Ruth Young is now home and no longer driving while listening. Um, Kathy Bryer is saying, I think that Starcraft DK feels different than what it used to. It used to be quite soft, not as much now. I think next time I will try either Brava or Lovecraft's paint box. So, yeah. Um, I haven't tried Brava paint box. There's no DK weight. There's no DK weight. That's the thing. So you've got to you've got to math it out and you've got to work out the differences for me in this particular instance it worked out because I wanted for I want this to cover a queen bed so I wanted that extra width um I am it's going to be too so long so if you do two 10 plies together does that make it a 20 ply Kim is just like 
I'm so glad you guys can hear her. I'm just, <laughs> I feel, I don't feel alone at all. Um, yeah. It's because it's cold in here. Was that, sorry, what's, what, what's going on? That I sneeze. Everybody uh, bless you. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I just continued on. I'm used to Kim sneezing near me. It's like, oh, wait a second. That Did she be. sneeze? <laughs> um, I don't know if she's allergic to me or my yarn. I have no idea. Like, she could totally be allergic to me and we just don't know. Um, sorry. Let me just scroll up here. I missed a question. Will it be really heavy in worsted rate rather than DK weight? Yeah, it will be a lot heavier, honestly. Um, I am using acrylic, so it's not like the difference between worsted and, and DK cotton, which would be even heavier. Um, but because I wanted to use cotton originally, this is not going to be as heavy as what a DK cotton would have been. Does You'll that be make able sense? To use it for like three days over winter. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, I, I'm going to make. I'm going to put it on a chair. I'm, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty, Kim. If you can get it back from your daughter. Yeah, I just realised how, like... Is it faded on camera? Oh, no, it's just this screen. Pfft, ignore the screen, Chantel. The other shot looks fine. Um, it can double it as a... Out on my is it? Can I see? Is it all right? Yeah, it is a little washed out. I might see if I can just... I'm going to play with the cameras. Like, that's ever been a wise thing to do. Um, let me just do that. I didn't do anything too dramatic. I just bumped its saturation up just a little. So that's less meh. Um, mine will be heavy in worsted because I crochet wicked tight. John and, and, um, John and, um, Die Wench should never, well, they could probably share a crochet project, unlike anybody else um where are we are you right <laughs> just touch me with things um the hands down has a bluish cast really i don't have a microphone dizzy no microphone for kim i'm just having a look um see if we can change up where are we we want she didn't want people to hear me it wasn't that at all <laughs> it wasn't that it was just Twice was that reasons um yeah i can't oh i'm not going to play with the white balance you guys it's it's a nightmare to play with and i'm not going to play with it live so that's what we that's what we've got. That's that's what we're going with. Um, just looks a bit cool coloured. Yeah, I've probably I've probably got too too much of a cool light in the hands down shot. I've got a light right here next to the webcam. It's probably a dash. Hang on, let me see if I can. There you go. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, Kathy's working kathy missed her hello from freaky because she's working on her queen now because her yarn arrived um john said i sent stephanie a blanket for the snowball express and she said it was like i wove it i would recommend going up a hook size um if 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 it's a if it comes out in a non-satisfactory tightness if you are happy with it then stick with it but if you want to change something i would go up a hook size i tend to go down a hook size because um, I crochet with gay abandon and um, <laughs> it's just like, like you'd be grateful that there's any stitch definition whatsoever. Um, <laughs> She's very experienced. She's a bit loose. And... Yeah, yeah. I just crochet quickly and so therefore I don't focus on the tension probably as much as I should. Um, Kim, uh, Leanne says, well, that was a fail because we can hear you just fine. Uh, well, I figured that the new microphone would pick us both up um, that I've got installed in here. So I wanted to test that as well. You know, we were always changing stuff here for the live stream. You know what it's like. 
they like to tweak things around and have a nice play and some things work and some things don't i was listening back to last week's and that clicking really got to me the buzzing mm. that was very annoying so i wasn't sure if that was the lav mic that she was using or if it was my mic picking up the lav mic so i've just been i'm ruling things out that's all i'm doing Brecca says, I haven't crocheted in years, so I don't know if it would be as tight as it used to be. It could be. It could even be tighter. You won't know until you give it a try, Rebecca. You should dig out a hook and some yarn and have a go. Um, <laughs> wrap it at warp speed. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. And, like, when I'm on live, I'm actually a bit slower than usual because I'm watching the chat, not my hands that much. Um... Vampire. Oh, oh, sorry, did I miss something? Sorry. Um, Vampire says my better half crochets and knits really tight. I should get him to go up a size or two. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Like, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't stop them. From it, yeah, it doesn't stop tight. them from going <laughs> super tight, but it stops their fabric from being cardboard. So they still crochet just or knit just as tight. But the end product is not as stiff, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Did that make sense? So are there any more questions about um, colour setting your yarns that you've purchased or your projects that you put? Even fibres the same way, you do it the same way. It depends on the base. And you do not agitate warm wool like that's the like a one lesson less stiff and more drape yes absolutely you get a lot nicer drapier fabric um, if you're if you have a, a bigger hook even if you are a firmer crocheter Jackie says there is more hook to go around long the stitches end up longer so they still pull tight but end up with a larger stitch yeah that's right because, you know, instead of going around a four and a half mil, they're going around a five mil, which gets them a bit better. Sometimes you want things to be stiff. <laughs> By the way, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm like looking at Sally's comment like, what? What are you talking about? And then I remember that was a discussion we were having last night. It's all good. Thanks, Sally. By the way. We were talking about your thumb. Yeah. Now that we've drawn attention to them. Okay, so what's happened is I broke this nail, like snapped it, and had to file it down. And as it's an acrylic nail, it's not my real nail because I'm a nail biter. I had to re... And, and then it also peeled up their special gel stuff. And I'm not due to go for an appointment for like weeks. And I didn't want to book in to fix one dumb nail. So what I did was I, I sanded it down, filed it down and then painted it so i don't have any of this pinky red but i did have some bright red so they are different but yeah and i think i did quite well considering i had to paint with my left hand so yeah um spanish she's totally ignored me when did i ignore you when i said sometimes you want things to be stiff that's right i did ignore you <laughs> Like if you're doing ammies. That's right. You do want firmer fabric if you are doing ammies or any sort of three direction, like 3D sort of like toys or, or things. Like if you're crocheting a house or something like that, you do want to go down. You want that firmer fabric. Um, John says, I think of how nice and flowy Tina's blankets are in her videos as I crocheted my bulletproof queen. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the thing. No one can shoot you in your sleep now, you know. Um, but yes, I like, I prefer a bit of drape. Mine, I would say this is probably a dash on the dense side. But it's once I wash layered. it, yeah. But also once I wash this, it will drape, it'll soften up. It'll, it'll be, you know, more, more softer. More softer. Sally went in a totally different direction. I'm sure you did, Sally. I'm sure you did. Um, she does that in person as well as online 
What, what's this? Oh, I ignoring you. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I can hear her and still just ignore her. It's, it's, it's about the content of her comments rather than a personal reflection on her, though. <laughs> I think it is a reflection <laughs> on me, actually. <laughs> Sometimes Kim says naughty things just to see if I'll bite. And off camera, <laughs> probably would bite. On camera, I try to be the nice knitting lady. Okay, everybody, that's what I am, the nice knitting lady. Of the knitting oh, who is currently crocheting. <laughs> oh, she died. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. Laughing is bad when your asthma is playing up. Speaking of it being nearly Halloween, Abby bought a new toy. And it is a bat skeleton and she is just putting it in random places around the house to see if we notice so you walk into the lounge room and it's hanging off the ceiling fan or I got in the car the other day and it was on the visor like I wasn't going to miss that um <laughs> knit spin girl says so but you're not knitting so not nice <laughs> sounds about right yeah yeah definitely sounds about right um, John says, this will soften in the wash and it's my seven-year-old daughter, so maybe being dense, it will help it last longer. When I do the tequila, I'm going to make a conscious effort to be loose. Yeah, you know, this is the thing. Like, you don't have to make the conscious effort to, to, to crochet looser. You can go up a hook size and that will make it looser and you can still enjoy the, um, it, you can still enjoy it. Um, real or plastic? If you're talking about my nails, plastic. I think you're talking about the bats. Oh, the bat is plastic as well. Um, it is definitely not a real bat skeleton in my house because that would be all sorts of gross, honestly. Um, she should have popped it in your fiber shack so we could all see the bat. Look, you know what? If Abby was here right now, which she's not, she's out with mates, um, she would definitely have brought it in to attack him with it. Like, no, there's no doubt in my mind. It will make an appearance at some stage between now and Halloween. So, you know, it, it, it will, you'll get to see it. You'll get to see it. Um, our Freaky says, oh, I was thinking of a spinning bat. No, no, not, not fibre for spinning. Um, just a plastic bat that we picked up at Woolies. Um... Our zooms happen an hour after you hit the hay. I'm sorry. They are like, you know, sort of seven o'clock our time, which we try to, you know, it works around most of our family dinners and things like that. We do have one that's on 12.30 on a Tuesday. So if you if you want to get involved in our regular zooms, there's links over in the Fibrific Fun Zone to go and check out. Um, and if you're not a member of the Fibrific Fun Zone, why not go over and join? It's fun. Why? Because I tell you. Um, and also, zony. Sorry? <laughs> it's fun and zony. Oh, fun, fun and zony. Correct. Absolutely. Um, Kim, thank you for the link. Um, I wanted to go as Shaun of the Dead for Halloween, but I couldn't find a cricket bat in the US for some reason. Oh, you couldn't order one from like Amazon UK. I can't believe you can't find a cricket bat. Seriously, I that... could make one on my cricket. Kim could make one on her cry cart. Um, Freaky says if you remind me next Monday, I'll pop in and try and not be naughty. You can be. You can be a little bit naughty. I mean, the zooms are a whole nother thing really they're, di they're, they're very different to these chats they're very much more relaxed you know we normally have our families walk in behind us and argue and you know life john says cricket a cricket bat yeah uh, cricket is not a thing in the u.s like I, I, it, look, I know that they play it in the US. There are people who play cricket in the US, surely. They're all expats. 
They, yeah, well, they are all expats, but surely they have to get this gear from somewhere. You just need a fence paling and a stick. Actually, that's a really good point. John, if, you, if you're any good on tools, buy a fence post and cut out some stuff and just wrap the handle in a bit of tape. That's pretty well a cricket bat. I mean, it's not a fancy one. I wouldn't use it to play the game, but it's enough for a costume. Um, Freaky says, one of my brothers had a rubber spider with like three foot long legs. Then he, then the topic went from fake spiders to real spiders and crawling on this. Yeah, no. Um, yes, Melissa, you should. Should I order more Bendigo cotton? Yeah, of course. Like, how is that even a question? I'm going to be ordering. Bendigo, for those of you that don't know and you're in Australia, Bendigo Woolen Mills Cotton is on sale right now for $11 for 200 gram balls of delicious, soft, yummy Bendigo Cotton. Mmm. Do it. Um, Lisa, says, Lisa, Lisa says that if Melissa does, she will. Melissa, you need to enable Lisa to buy Bendigo Cotton. <laughs> Like stash. stash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I'm actually planning um, another, maybe not a queen, but another mosaic that's in two colours. I'm looking at the French navy and the latte, and I'm going to make just a single bed version to drape over the couch in my husband's um, nest. It's not a den; it's a hallway with a couch and television in it. Um, so we call it his nest. Bendigo Woolen Mill, freaky, is what BWM is short for. But they're cotton. They've released some new colours. They're not new. Anyway, they've released some colours into their permanent range. And their 200 gram balls are down to $11, which they're normally 15 so they're normally really good value. So dropping them down to 11 is just awesome. So Thanks, Melissa. Six of each colour. Six of each colour, Melissa. Not two. Two is useless. As we've learnt from me, don't be me, don't buy two. Okay? Because it's never enough for anything. Six. Um, Alison saying thanks. Now I want to go and look at their cotton with the, like, face palm. Like, you should totes go and look, There's Alison. There's new colours, Alison. There's new colours. You need to check it out. And and let me know if you guys think the French navy and the um and the latte look good together. Um. <laughs> French navy and white looks uh, snow looks really good. Yeah, but see, Tim's couch is kind of like a it's in between the latte and parchment because it's not white. You can have a look at it when I've we go got inside. Navy at home. Yeah. Um. Nitspin girl says, which is why I tend to buy by the kilo. Because you, you was made of clever. You're not me. Four ply, eight ply. See, I'm normally like eight ply or ten ply. It depends. I'm looking for my blanket. I'm thinking eight ply, honestly. Sally says, yes, the French navel and latte looks good together. As opposed to a Norwegian navel. <laughs> or a California navel, Ari. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are definitely on fire today. Kelly says, I have their colour chart right here and those colours look good together. I haven't received my updated colour chart yet and no, I'm a bit miffy, honestly. Where's my colour chart, Bendigo Woolen Mills? Maybe you haven't bought enough lately. I oh, really? <laughs> really? Like, if you haven't bought something in the last 12 months, you normally dropped off the list. But I bought stuff in January. I'm trying to be good, you guys. And I did just buy all this yarn for this queen. Um, so Ellen says, what? Oh, Melissa's made a shelf of fiberific. Oh, is it, Sarah, is it, where, where did you see that? In our chat, on Messenger. Oh, I'm going to have to have a look later. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, where are we? Yes, oh, and they, uh, they look, to, where are we? John says, $11 Australian is seven eighty seven, which is ten forty eight Canadian. They do ship internationally, don't they? If they don't, just contact me. We can we can arrange for it to be shipped internationally. Um, we have lots of local people who are happy to. 
Oh, we can send you Tim Tams. Yeah, we can we can increase the weight of your parcel by 200 grams for Tim Tams. Um, Shintami says, I can't buy anything because I have nowhere to put it. I'm sure that you'd have somewhere. Like, is the boot of your car empty? Because that's a great place to store cotton. I wouldn't store wool, but you could totally store cotton. Um, Swellen says, one of my projects on the go is Yarnspirations Burnout Mosaic Crochet Baby Blanket in grey and white. What colours are you going, Chantelle? For, like, for, for Tim's blanket, that would be the French navy and the um, latte at this stage. I'm not 100% certain, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, I have to do some Mathingtons because I think I'm going to need like four or five balls of each one. So I have to be, I, I need to be sure and get the right amount. <sighs> Unlike every other blanket I've ever made. Like I bought, I did all the math for this, right? All the math I could possibly do on meterage that I could see online. I didn't buy enough of the purple. So now I have to put in another Brava, another Brava order to get me some more eggplant. So it's a very nice purple. I love it a lot. I just thought 12 balls would be enough. I don't think it is. I don't think it's it's enough. Um, they do was just checking they calculate it on weight, but it's still in Australian dollars. Yes. Um, Bub says it's called insulation, not stash. <laughs> Go, Bub. Um, that is great. I love that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to check my chart here. Um, I reckon you should one, do two, denim. One, two, three, four... You reckon denim rather than the French Navy? I if you went like denim and glacier. Is, is glacier darker or lighter? You got to remember, light. Tim is a grub. Okay, so white is not an option. Well, the glacier is the light grey. Okay, I like light grey. Like but you know how much I like grey. Glacier is the grey that I've got from my Star Wars blanket, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. All right, because I like that. That's a nice colour. Um. So coming How up, that Star Wars blanket going? It's like, psh. <laughs> it wasn't. I did pause it um, because my hands were not coping with the poking the needle thing. Um, we finished a row, yay! I've just got to mark it off off camera so you guys can't see my chart. And that is the final row of this color. We've got a, a purple one next. Move you out of the way move you into the way we're going to yarn bath you up shortly um hang on i've just got to flip it hello air conditioning how are oh, you i was finally getting warm again <laughs> <laughs> i was starting to heat up and i was like mm, when's that air conditioning going to kick in <laughs> and there it was um Freaky says, I'm just bummed. I just tossed a whole chocolate bar in the trash. Didn't like the taste of it. So apparently not all chocolate is the same. Uh, no. Definitely not. That is definitely truth. Not all chocolate is created equal. Definitely not. But I'm sorry you had to chuck out a whole bar. Actually, the other day I bought a new chocolate to me. So it's Whitaker's, which is a good brand. Um... And it's a Whitaker's jelly tip. I'd offer you some, Kim, but it's all gone. Um, it's delicious. It's on a milk chocolate base with like red jelly stuff in the middle, like like I wouldn't say Turkish delight texture. It's a little more jelly than Turkish delight, um, like softer. And then it's topped with white chocolate. It was so good. Um, I don't do math. I just bought eight kilometers worth of two colors and hoping it's enough. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, Lisa just says, okay, I just found out we paid our gas bill twice and apparently I'm not allowed to shop at Bendigo Woolen Mills. Fair enough. Um, the fusion blanket where Chantel has used her Star Wars fabrics. Yes. Um, yeah. Hang on, I'm just going to, you know, you guys know the drill. I'm at the beginning of a new row. Um, so... What I did was I've just recently bought um, some Clover Sashiko needles. Um, 
and so I haven't opened them yet but I have bought them and also some rubber um, thimble thing for pulling it out so that I can get a decent grip on it and so it's not just sliding like because it was just sliding down my finger and I was actually getting like little cuts from the tip of the needle just like too much it was too hard on my poor little baby baby hands and so I put it aside everything's still there it's still going like it's not like a, I'm gonna frog this kind of thing I still want it I think it's an adorable blanket um, it's so precious. I'm just double checking. Okay, that's confusing. All right, we don't have as easy a, a, a run for this color. Okay. I could bring like one of those sleeping bags. <laughs> What you need, what you need to bring next week, Kim, is one of those a dress, shield. dress poncho hoodie things that are like the full length. The hoodies. The hoodies. Oh, what we could do is I could put you over here so that you're under the aircon. You'll be in the camera shot, but <laughs> what does that matter? It's not like it's the first time. No, that's all right. But you'll be you under. You can move all the stuff off that table and I could just like perch on the end. I mean, that's totally doable, and there's power right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, Kim, we've still got 45 minutes. I could totally move you in there no. right now. No. You sure? All right. Okay, just check it. Um, John says, I figured out why I can't knit anymore. I learnt to throw, but then I started to crochet, and now I'm holding the yarn to crochet. John. John. There's this chick, this Australian <laughs> chick, who has a YouTube channel that has a video that's specifically for teaching continental knitting to crocheters. And that's because continental knitting and crocheters put their yarn in the same hand. You should go and watch it. It's her channel trailer. You can't miss it by going to Fiberific's YouTube channel. Um, it is right there. You totally need to at least watch it and give it a try. It may not work for you, but it's definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, has anyone bought the Grey Wisp? Is it purpley? Which which yarn is Grey Wisp? That's not the cotton. Is there a I cotton? Think it's the dark. Is that a cotton? I don't know. I I haven't bought it myself. Um, Kelly says it's slightly lavender, but it's gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. This doesn't feel right. Hang on a second. I've got to just check my chart. I think it's just you, oh. Sally. What's wrong? She's out of sync. Um, Lego Bob says was buffering, but you're back now. Was I buffering? Yeah, maybe it's too cold. That's not a thing. <laughs> I can turn the aircon on if you like. Would you like oh. me? I can turn it off. You sure? I could turn it off for you, Kim. I would turn it off for you. Mel had to restart the stream. I didn't get an any I didn't get any notices. I normally get like a message up if my connection's just, bad, just you guys. Just hit the refresh on your browser tab. Yeah. <laughs> Might have been when you were busy crocheting and you didn't notice. It could be. It could be that. But I normally do the the thing pops it's up like with the message. Big and red and scary. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um Knitspin girl says no buffering here. Okay. All right, that's cool. That just means it's local to, to whoever. And it's not me. I like it when it's not me. Um, where are we? <clears throat> Excuse me. All righty. Let me just check that I'm doing the right thing here. It does look like I'm doing the right thing. I'm just checking. All right. Okay. 
Because last night I kept doing the wrong thing and had to keep pulling it back and it was just such a drama, like bleh, so annoying. And it feels like exactly the same sort of thing, if that makes sense, that I'm doing. Um, that Oz chick taught this Gumby knitting. <laughs> I, who is Jimmy Welch? Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Seriously, Jimmy, tacky. And the answer is no. You'd know. It would be, there'd be no. <laughs> it would it not be. <laughs> it would not be ambiguous. Also, you're in the wrong room if you think that kind of talk is going to offend us. But we will time you out. <laughs> Freaky says that may have been me. <laughs> uh, Lego says struggling to do the Queen Cow watch and type. I, I understand. It is tricky to do, you know, lots of things at once sometimes. Um, yeah. It can count for you if you need to, Melissa. Oh, yeah, take that offer up. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, just double checking I'm doing the right thing. Ah. Oh. Freaky says, so true, can't craft and spell at the same time. See, we all have our limitations, even Freaky. Which gets priority, Freaky, the spelling or the crafting? Like, for me, the crafting would take priority to be like, yeah, whatever, I don't care if I can't spell a word right. I'm in the middle of something right now. Phone. Where are we? <laughs> yeah, I, I like, I agree with you, Freaky. There are days. Working my queen too, so I agree with Melissa. I'm using all sorts of acrylics. Some I don't remember what brand they are. Are they coming out like a similar thickness or are you noticing some colours are thicker or thinner than others? She's using scraps, so they're probably like all random. Well, that's what she was saying. I'm just wondering if they're like, if they're actually different. Because like, you know, like anything... Not all DK is exactly 200 metres per 100 grams or, or whatever. Um, so I'm just curious if she's noticing a difference. I need more tea. More tea, more tea, more tea, more tea. Um, hey, Yarn Dragons Creations, how are you going? You missed my very impassioned discussion about how to colour fast our yarns um, or projects, which that's back at the start. I'm not going to rehash it because my blood pressure will go up again. That's, that's awesome. never good. Salt. You salt for everything. Kim, I will throw this water canister at you. And I'm quite close, so it would reach even with my lane throwing. Claire says, like chocolate, not all yarn is created equally. Absolutely, 100% agree. No high blood pressure. Well, high blood pressure is actually not usually a problem for me, but I was getting a bit worked up. Sorry? Well, unless Kim's here. That's actually a very valid point. No, um, no, that's not normally one of my very many health issues. It's not that. Um, okay, do I just buy yarn or do I have a project in mind? Well, you have vague inklings of a project that you yeah. possibly would like to do, and it's a very large blanket, so you know, at least five of each color. <laughs> um, Look, this is the problem with buying yarn just to stash it, like when it's on sale, right? That's what I did. Do you guys remember the pink awesome Spin Your Granny's blanket, the pink and white one I did at the beginning of the year? That was yarn that I bought from Bendigo Woolen Mills when it was on sale. Ten years ago. It wasn't ten years. It was like seven, okay? <laughs> and I only bought two of each colour. And the slight, the problem with that was discontinued. It was discontinued when I finally decided to use it, 
and I needed four of one of the colors, not two. So I had to go on a scavenging rampagey all over the internet, finally got my hands on a bit more, still ran out. It was a different color batch. It, yeah, I recommend more. I recommend as many as you can, like at least three, okay? But I suppose like if you're making blankets, you want at least three of each color. If you're making like garments, these are 200 gram balls, you can get away with two. Depends on your garment. But yeah, it does depend on your garment. It depends on what you'd like to make. Buying yarn and actually using it are two completely separate hobbies from Knit Spin Girls. Agreed. Agreed. Um, uh, John says, long story short, buy all the yarn. Yep, TLDR, buy all the yarn. Um, Leanne says, so far it's not too bad, but I do have some thinner DK coming. Hope it still will look okay. Tina says to use the same size hook, but I'm not sure. I'll try and see. I still think you need to keep the same size hook. Otherwise, your stitch heights are going to change and that will mess up your mosaic. Um, I, Freaky, I do like your little um, caveat there as much as you can afford. Absolutely. Um, Tell your children. I mean, you could sell your children, as, as is Kim's suggestion, but I don't recommend that. It's illegal, and I don't do anything illegal ever. Also, my kids wouldn't actually get me my phone. Well, that's the thing, eh? Like, neither would mine. <laughs> um, yeah, John's saying the same thing. Tinny uses different thicknesses, but the same hook. I don't have any and I love the dogs. I'm confused, Lisa. Did she I miss... She doesn't have any kids and she loves the dogs, so she's not going to have the dogs, I assume, is how she means. Okay, thank you, Kim, for that translation. I appreciate it. My if brain... Lisa and I are like, you know... I know. You guys are on the same wavelength. It is insane. insane. You guys insane. need to meet. <laughs> you need to... Actually, you have met. Lisa's come to Caffeinated Crafters. Well, there you go. You have met. You just may not have the two things connected in your brain <laughs> my aunt might ask me to move if I start calling my yarn children <laughs> I mean that's a risk that's a, like that's that's a legit risk um, Lisa says yes Kim thank you for Lisa speak <laughs> love it I love it hang on so we're really hoping that this week we don't crash and burn towards the end of the live stream like we did last week. Because if that happens again, it just means we have to make our live stream shorter. Because obviously my gear can't cope with two hour live streams. Um, which is odd because I did do four hours a day on stream yards while I was doing the big wool show. Maybe it was the double mic and double camera. It might be the double, triple, triple, triple camera. camera. It also could be just that camera too, because that's the camera that I replaced. Just no more cam. But that also means no more, um, no more snowy cam, which is also devastating because I love snowy cam. I, I mean, spanner cam's all right. <laughs> um, Diana E, I got my Brava from Knit Picks. Um, if you, I would like to throw up a link. Thank you. Can you make it an affiliate link by any chance? I can throw up the whole page of all the affiliates. Ah, oh, that would be wonderful. Kim's going to toss in my affiliate link page. So that means that if you use it... Have you updated the Etsy one yet? Um, no, the Etsy gnomes isn't there yet. Just Etsy in general. I, I mean, I, could, I should probably stick an Etsy one up there, but I just don't have it yet. Oh, Jackie beat you. Jackie beat you to it. Wow. Um, so. quit now. What happens is if you click on one of these affiliate links and make a purchase, Fibrific gets a small commission. Now this makes no difference to the seller on the other end. So they don't lose out anything. You don't pay more and I just get a little bit. Um, yeah. Freaky Geek says, how do you keep track of your rows? Um, I'm just going to very carefully, I'm just, I'm just trying to bring in just one little. Oh, chart keeper. I have a chart keeper. And that's as much of this chart as I'm going to show but I also have it written in and these little marks here are when I change colors and I've renumbered the rows because I'm on the second repeat but this is a magnetic chart keeper from Clover 
which I sell in my store, but I'm currently out of stock and I will be ordering more. Um, check your pattern, you've missed something. Are you sure? Oh, where I am right now. Sorry, yes, I was about to pull that back when um, Freaky distracted me. Sorry, thank you for caring. I appreciate that. Is that what you were talking about, that one right there? Because otherwise, I, I don't know. Yes, you do, Sally. Um, so everybody has one that's working on this queen thing. What? Bob's finished her rainbow socks. And all the ends are woven in. Yeah. Um, I have the same thing, but it's Nick Companion on iPad. Yeah, I'm a paper girl. I'm like, for someone who's so technological, I love paper for patterns because I like draw all over them and scratch. And then if my battery runs out, I'm not annoyed because that used to happen all the time. Yes, investing in a chart keeper. I'm definitely looking at a bit more of a, a, a variation on my clipboard. <laughs> Um, fixed excellent thank you thank you you guys I appreciate you caring and letting me know when I screw up um, four or five stitches back she's saying I don't think so uh, now you're freaking me out you guys it doesn't Kathy's up to row 40 Hey, like what? Didn't she only start like a couple of days yesterday. ago? <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I know we arrived yesterday. Oh my god, Kathy! What size blanket are you doing? I told I her fixed she had it. To catch I think you. she had to stop the Havana and start the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> my crown's staying on my head. That's great. It's sort of askew though. It is, like, you know. Oh god, look, let me just see if I can. How's that? Is that better? That's, that's all I'm doing. That's it. That's as good as you're getting. Um, I thought the eggplant was black. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's well and truly an eggplant. Like it's, it's a nice, it's a real nice purple. It just looks very dark here, but in real life you can definitely see it's purple. Um, Sally says I only started yesterday and I'm up to row 15. Well, I'm feeling really bad because I started like over a week ago. And I'm only up to row, what am I on? Row something. Have you started your second repeat of the chart? Yeah, I'm on row 56. Yeah, I'm about halfway through the second repeat. Um, now that you know that there's repeats of the chart. Yeah, that's right. I've gone in and, you know. Lisa says I really need some help with my sewing. Well, you, like, I mean, sewing camps are good for that, right? I would say. That's, it is such a lovely colour, honestly. I yeah, highly recommend. It's not very wheelchair. Well, it's not wheelchair friendly to put it on. Oh, like okay. Steps. Yeah, that's totally not doable. Lisa is wheelchair all the way. Bum! Sorry, YouTube. Um. Sorry, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about, about um, making templates for the chart and joining them together to make a pretty easy one ginormous chart. I'm like, just use the graphic program. <laughs> Cut and paste. Yeah. And yep. Or you could do what the, some of the Queen users are doing and just create your own massive Excel spreadsheet. Josephine with her. Uh, Josephine her with her AO printing. Foot, foot. Um. I started with my stash and ran out of the pattern colour while waiting for the order. <gasps> oh, she'd already worked up to row 27. Abby has seven rows left on her stash. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. She is firing. Well, I don't feel so bad now, Kathy. I thought that you started from, like, one yesterday. That is so, like... Pass on our congratulations to Abby. I can't <laughs> wait to see her skirt. Lisa said, if only you knew a printer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wide format 
wide format print. We're a bit addicted to wide format printing now. You realise this is a problem. Well, it's not because we know printers. <laughs> It was a problem. It was a problem. We just had a friend of ours, like, she let us know that she could do AO printing at work. So we were like, could you print this pattern? Try and, this one. <laughs> and so she said to come home with this like, massive roll of pattern printouts of, like, sewing patterns. <laughs> like, one of them's one that I'd printed out 40 sheets of A4 and sticky taped them all together. Now I have an AO copy and I'm just like, oh, Hello. It's totally beautiful. Um, she's now working on her pearling rose. You said last night she got pearl down. Is that right? Um, John has 44 inch printers at work. Size yep. 111 centimeters. Nice. Nice. That's about AO, isn't it? Probably. Just over a metre. Um, I'm just focusing here for a second because I'm nearly at the end of this row. Um, I had to make my own version of the knitting chart I'm using. The pattern is light on a dark background and I'm doing dark on a light background. The chart was doing my head in. That's what the, sk the girls with the queen were having the same issue. Oh, really? Remember, um, because a lot of them are using white as the lattice colour. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were doing... It was messing their heads up because they were looking for the, the lighter colour. Yeah, and they started with the wrong colours. And John's being cheeky, everybody. Just so you all know. Check that out. John's being cheeky in the chat. Um, Diana says, I really want to start a queen, but I have to finish the Arizona I'm working on first. The struggle is real. Drop the Arizona like it's hot and join into the queen. And then you can finish them both off later. And then you can wear a crown. And then you get to wear a crown while you work. And be in Queensland. And that's, oh, that's right. Everyone can be virtual Queenslanders. Yeah. While they're making their queens. I love that. Through your border restrictions. Yeah, border <laughs> restrictions in your face. <laughs> or you can put that on a border entry declaration. I'm a Queenslander. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, hang on. I've got to go back. I nearly botched it. Um... Whatever works, Leanne's craft room, all our brains all work differently, yep. Ah, uh, the Arizona has a gift deadline. Make somebody else do the Arizona. Yeah, give someone else the Arizona to finish. Like, can't you gift the the gift of learning how to crochet your own damn Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> give them a gift certificate. Oh, dear. We're the worst. Are we not the worst? Kim is a bad influence. I'm never this mean when Kim's not here. I know that is truth. She's a border bubble. You're in the border bubble, yes. Yeah, as of today, because we're going to visit my brother-in-law, because he's not too far from you. Yay. And I'm going to see my mum. Going to see my mum. I haven't seen my mum since Christmas. I'm so excited. And I'm sorry if you if you can't see yours but I'm just really excited right now I'm sorry if that is in any way offensive I'm very <laughs> look I started it for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah look this is how you finish it just keep going <laughs> uh, Lindsay says but finish the Arizona lol it's a fun pattern <laughs> oh dear oh and hi Lindsay um Jackie says I still can't leave the island if I want to come back I think that's ridiculous I mean, obviously, it would depend on where you're going. If you go to, you know, Melbs, I get that. But most of the other states are starting to open up now. Anyway, they've got to do what they've got to do. <laughs> John says blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. I'm not going to say it out loud just in case your mum can hear through the walls, okay? Um... Lindsay says, I've been here the whole time just lurking and working on gnomes. How cute are the gnomes? I'm assuming you're doing um, Emma's gnomes. Like, um, uh, oh, my brain's just Pip and Poppycock's nose. Gnomes. Nose. Oh, are we going to get to the end of this row before our time is out? We may not. 
and I've decided that I'm going to finish at 12 no matter what today because I don't want to risk mass crash shutdown like we had last week because it means I can't put up my pretty end template card all right <laughs> clover and bramble that's their names they're so cute they're so cute They are, they're definitely cute. So, um, Kim, could you toss up a link for my Etsy thingy for the, for the Clover and Bramble? Again? Um, Didn't I already do that? Yeah, you've done it once, but you can do it again. It won't kill you. You're not allergic to it, right? You don't know that. I, I mean, that's true. I don't know that. Um, where are we? Ravelry isn't giving me any ideas. For what? What do you need ideas for? Like for your Bendigo cotton? Um, do a queen. My MLC had its own wings this month. Only one week for delivery and my sweets are gone already. <laughs> oh, dear. That's awesome. I'm so glad it got to you a bit quicker this time. Um, what, what date are we at? We're at the first. So there's another one going to be shipping out in a couple of weeks. Um, the girl gnome split the... I just thought I'd better quickly read that before I, uh, you know... The beard's in the different spots. Yeah, the so beard's up higher. Beard. <laughs> it's not so much a beard split. It's a hair split. Oh, uh, yeah, for your Bendigo wool. I just thought you said you can't have Bendigo wool and mills. But, like, pretty well, like, if you're looking for uses for the cotton, anything that uses the cotton is good. Just remember, Bendigo wool and mills cottons are a dash on the thin side, like... So that eight ply is probably I would I would class that eight ply more like a five ply. Would you? The Bendigo cotton? Yes. Yeah. But most cottons are thinner than their counterpart. In really. wool. True, true. They don't have as much. Oh, I said pull. Brendan said I couldn't. Ha ha ha. Sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Jackie says mine only got here yesterday. So what you're saying, Jackie, is the, the Mystery Lace Club that went to the US got there quicker than the one going to Tasmania. Is that what we're saying? Because that's ridiculous. That is literally ridiculous. Um, so yeah, Bendigo you can get in a DK or in a or in a 10 ply, like you can get it in an 8 ply or a 10 ply or a 4 ply. They're all lovely. Four plies together. It's an 8 ply. It is not an 8 ply, Kim. You are giving misinformation on my YouTube channel and YouTube will strike me down because there's lies. Like That's a I lie. That's exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same thing. Yes. Um, I'm giving you the opportunity to correct me. <laughs> That's right. Like, if you want a color set wool, use salt. you don't yeah. use salt ever. Don't use salt. You're just wasting salt and you're going to get salty wool. That's it. That's all it does. So, yeah. Um, Oh, Sky and Denim, they are nice. I don't know. I don't know which one I'd go with. Yeah, that's true. Lindsay says, who's tasting the wool, though? I mean, <laughs> not me, but like if you rub it on your face, you get salt in your eyes. You know? Does that mean it's antiseptic? I mean, no. <laughs> not antiseptic Kim it's just annoying um, Dizzy says I just realized I can delete all my playground duty reminders as I just got one it's nice to be here for the whole chat when silly husbands don't call yeah my husband still hasn't learnt to not message me during live streams how long have I been live streaming on a Thursday for a week <laughs> like at least three years and he still hasn't gotten the memo why did this start? Why did I start live streaming? Is that, is that yeah. what? Yeah. Do you remember? Because I know, like, Stephanie's was a definite, you were all sick or, and there was a void. Yeah. So we nagged her. Well, I nagged her. Um, um, I don't really remember why. I think I just, I wanted to just live stream. Yeah. I like to use technology and, and I decided. To stream and then we said, 
it. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. I think that's really how it started was we just wanted to chat and craft and yeah. I, I think that's all it was. I don't I don't think there was any particular la, particular la, that's a new word for today. Any particular reason for it other than the fact that I wanted I wanted to talk to you guys and you guys can talk back this way. So um, hey Caitlin, thank you. Um, I did start live streaming before yesterday. That's that is correct. Um, yeah, it's got to be at least three years. I can't remember exactly the date of my first live stream. I have to go back and check it. But yeah, it's been some time. Uh, yeah, and then Stephanie was watching my live streams, and then she started live streaming. So um, yeah. Oh, Leanne, you are doing great. Leanne's sister is called two times so far. And she's staying strong. Hang on, I know I botched it. I'm pulling it out. Gosh. Yeah, no, it's got yeah, it's gotta be at least three years. I think I started live streaming not long after I started the regular YouTube updates. And then the the live stream stayed and the regular YouTube videos didn't. <laughs> I don't know. I like talking to you guys and having you respond. Um, Bubs said Bubs should be here tomorrow because the local sorting centre broke down last week. Oh my gosh. We decided the 50th episode or 50th video that we put up should be the live one. Oh really? Mm. Well there you go. I didn't really... Maybe it was a 50th video celebration. I don't know. Hey, that was on my birthday. 2017. 2017, so yeah, three years. What date in 2017? March, this is my birthday. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, I love coming here. It makes the situation so much better when you can't get out and socialise. Such an amazing community you've created here. We've got like such a good bunch of people, honestly. And some weirdos. Also Kim. And, uh, <laughs> no, Kim's good. Um, no, we have, we really do be having a really amazing group of people, all of you guys who just jump in and chat here and over on the Facebook page as well, um, or the Facebook group, I should say, in the fun zone. And everyone just really gets like into each other's lives and becomes friends and, and or not like that's the thing people can really like get closer or not if they want to it's nice um you can blame lynn for me finding you i can blame lynn yeah how did lynn find me well when she was on a cruise and in the state yeah she found out about childhood and into middle ah oh, yep 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 and then she found you because you were the local i was like the supplier. only childhood supplier way back then Oh, that's right. And then so you came to the craft, the craft show. show. And then I started watching your YouTube things I love videos, which you stopped doing. Which I'm going to start doing again. And Don't worry. Yeah. The stuff I love videos are coming back. And then I started stalking you. And then I turned up at <laughs> Then you just turned up. <laughs> <laughs> and once I worked out my life wasn't in danger. <laughs> Yet. Oh, dear. Um... Leanne says she found me through Bob Wilson um, and and because I was so local, it was strange how things happen. Um, yeah. It is weird how we find the different parts of our crafting lives and not even just our crafting lives. Um, Mel said that she found me when she was researching Chowgoo needles as well. Yeah, like for a while there, I was one of the very few Chowgoo sellers in Australia and there weren't a lot of videos talking about them. It's there's more now. There's more now. But mine You're is still the original and the best. I don't know if I'm the original, but I'm def I'm definitely the best. <laughs> oh. Are you sure? I don't know. Like I think oh yeah, it has. Hang on. Look, let's just let's just go hard. <laughs> <laughs> How's that, Kim? Great. Is it straight? <laughs> Um, Lisa says it's been a year this weekend since I found you. That's right, because we met at the Gimpy 
um, craft retreat. Um, Chintami found me at a big craft show years ago. Freaky Geek can't recall who he found. Well, Freaky Geek, I, I don't know if you found me through Bob Wilson, but you were paying out on its crochet clock um, th through my channel first. So you, I'm definitely either first or second. And then Crochet Clock was after me. So she's either second or third. Because I remember I was having a conversation about you. <laughs> whether or not to trust your comments. Yeah, whether or not you were like a legit troll or, or whether it was a... She's um, still lost, Freaky. Still lost. Yeah. Um, Sally found me through Claire. Yep. Um, Which is funny though, because Claire did her lives after you started yours. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually talked to Claire into going yeah. live. Yeah. Because lives are fun. That's why we do them. They're so much fun. Jackie They're met me in the real crazier. life before Fiberific was even a thing. Absolutely. We used to go to the same Spinners Guild. Uh-oh, we're at the bottom. Oh, no. Freaky says, I'm always a troll wannabe, but not that nasty. Yeah, no, and that was what I said. You're cheeky, but you're not mean. John, it's literally said Finch hat on. I, sorry, I think I've missed something. Finch is on. What? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I've missed something. I don't know. Dizzy and John are having. They're having a convo. It's all good. Um, but yeah, no, it's kind of fun how and like working things out and. Working out where you know somebody from and so, uh, John was laughing that Townsville is the laziest name for a city ever. Okay. Sounds like it should be a game on your phone. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Um John says I YouTubed a ton of tutorials all around the same time, so I'm not sure who I found when. Jada was my first live though, then Steph, then... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm definitely after <laughs> Steph, John. That's not our fault, Melissa. Yep, that's totes on you, because Melissa, I am slightly more distracted, and I'm on my second row, okay? Um, Kathy says, I heard about Fibrific from Steph and Pippin. There you go. Because we are... What, 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 What's making me think about it is we are creeping ever closer to that magic 5,000 mark where I'll be doing a live die-along, if any of you don't know what that is, is I'll be... We don't either because we haven't we've done We've never yet. done one before. <laughs> and what will be available is you can buy kits of undyed yarn and and um, the bits and, like, you know, the little ties that I use, the stuff, exact thing that I use here. Um, or you can buy your own yarn, especially if you're international. It's definitely worth getting your own yarn because, like, shipping, nightmare. Uh, and then what we're going to do is using exactly what you've got in your kits, plus I'll give a list of food, um, food-grade dyes that I'll, be, that I'll have on hand so that we can all use our normal saucepans and pots and not worry about, you know, like, evil chemical things. And then we are going to be doing a live dialogue where it will be live like this, but you'll have your yarn with your phone or your tablet or whatever propped up so we can all do things together. Um, but yes, we are creeping ever closer. So if you know anybody who you think would be interested in this, <laughs> I know, right? But if you, if you know someone who would be interested in this and we can get that up to 5,000 subscribers, I would love to do a we live dialogue with everybody. <laughs> Counting when you're tired is hard to frog. Absolutely, Diana. I agree with you. Jackie says we are at 4.39 thousand. That's right. We are so close. Um, if you hit 5K before Halloween, you could have a live dialogue. We did have a live die session. I think he's saying the wrong guy. He is. Uh, I know. He is. But we did the live die last Halloween with me and Kim and Andrea. It wasn't a die along. It was just a live die session. Um, that was fun. Game Gamer says, remember the, when the reassures of just wanting a thousand? Yeah. I just want a thousand. Just so that I can live stream just from my phone. So when I go away, I can live stream. I remember that. And I lied. I want all the, the num. What it is. Okay, this is the deal. 
some people, not you guys, obviously, some people think your YouTube channel's not legit um, if you don't have bigger numbers and they don't take you seriously. I take myself very seriously. Um, and there are things that I would like to be able to do that YouTube doesn't let me do because you have to have bigger numbers before they'll let you have access to it. So they're butt faces. And so, yeah, so, you know, there are things that I would like to do down the track that require more of you. So, you know, be more. Um, where are we? Phone's particularly drunk today from Game Widows. I know that one. Um, and the costumes. That's right. We, I was actually just packing up the hats and stuff into the cupboard the other day. Um, ooh, Lisa has found a pattern. It made my son. Oh yeah, because you went to, you went out straight after it. And you still had all your Halloween makeup on. So fun, so much fun. That was such a good day. And we had the little bat pins. Maybe I could do a rerun of the Halloween bat badges with the little fibrific ninja as a bat. They were so cute. You could put them into the mystery lace club boxes for I could if I wanted. I don't even have one though. I know you've got one. You should do a toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I should do a what? A toilet paper one. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Corona year. Oh my gosh. Um, Jackie says I can't believe it was nearly a year ago. I know. Yarn Dragon says small number creators take it just as serious as big number ones. Absolutely we do. I mean, not all of us, but I do. Bye, Melissa. Bye, Bobby. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Yes, please, to a bat pin. I'll, I'll have to get those organised. I'll have a dig around and see what I can do. All right, we're at the little bit here where it's slightly different. Um... So it's one, two, and that. And this. We did it. Hey, Melissa, sucked in. We got two rows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, wow. Well, we did. We managed to get our two rows in. This is the last of this colour, and we're moving on to this one when I join on the next colour. It's this sort of, it's not quite as orange as the screen's making it out to be. It's a weird colour. How would you describe that colour? Pumpkin. You reckon? It's not as orange as pumpkin. It looks pumpkin on the screen. It's a bit... Russet. Yeah. Pumpkin-y russet. Oh, rusty pumpkin. Rusty pumpkins. They call it coral. Well, it's not coral. It's not coral. I don't know what kind of coral you guys have over there, but this isn't the kind we have here. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> Melissa says cheeky. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm now... Actually, you've just reminded me I need to mark it off. I've just finished row 56. I'm on to row 57 and a new colour. Guys, I just want to say a huge thank you for joining me today. And if any of you have gone and clicked on those um, affiliate links or if you've jumped over and joined my Patreon, I really appreciate everything you do to help me keep doing this because it's fun and it's nice to be able to just have fun. So um, I will see you all next week, next Thursday for me, next Wednesday if you're in the USA. Um, and if you want to re-watch the, um, the replay, if you've got any questions about the... the the, the salt or any of that stuff throw them in and I'll see what I can do to answer those as well um, Vampia says it looks like pumpkin spice um, Kelly says thank you for all of your dying for all I hope that you have fun with it Margaret I found you because I was looking for chow goo needles and now I'm starting my queen thank you so much for starting oh thank you Margaret um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will catch you all next time see you later